Hey everyone, it's Monica. Welcome back to Homeschool Voices. Today, we're going to be talking about why focusing on your homeschool journey is going to be far better than focusing on the destination. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about why you don't want to focus too much on outcomes or the destination, as I said. If you watch some of my previous videos, you will see how I am a really strong advocate of having goals and having a plan. How could somebody who advocates such detailed planning, because they sort of do, right? It, you make those long-term goals, that determines your yearly goals, and that determines your monthly and weekly goals. So that really sounds like you're focused on outcomes, correct? And, and I have to say, originally I was. I was really focused on outcomes. Uh, very specific, because that's my personality. And as I go through this homeschool journey, I learned things and, and I want to share them with you guys and I think that there's been a little bit of an evolution in my thoughts. I'm going to try to explain it, but it really does still work with that original idea of having goals. So let's just imagine for a minute that you are going on a road trip from California to New York and you want to get there in a week, we'll say. <laughs> so you have a goal, you want to get there at a certain time, right? Just kind of like with an education, right? You you. You want to learn certain things by the time they're 18, we'll say. Um, if you're just focused on the goal, then you'll probably just drive straight to New York and say, yay, I made great time and I got there safely. But if you have the goal, you'll still get to New York. You, you might be a day late, but you also might stop and do some interesting things. You might eat at some interesting restaurants. You might take a little extra time to talk to some interesting locals. You might take a detour or two. You might learn a thing or two. And you might surprise yourself and you might have some of the best memories of your life on that road trip when you were a little more flexible and a little more willing to go with the flow. But you still had a goal, right? It's not as if you were like, I'm just going to go on a road trip and see where I end up. No, you had a goal. So that's exactly what I'm advocating for. To have a goal, but to let that goal be your direction. When you're formulating your goals, it is important to take some time Think about what is a good education. I have a video, you, you can look for that. I'll link to it below. What is a good education? What does it mean to you? Uh, what do you want your kids to learn? You need to have direction. That's what the goals are for. But be careful not to let those goals be um, oppressive. D don't, don't feel like you're a slave to the goals and you have to accomplish them and everything at a certain time frame because I think what that can do is just negate everything that's good about homeschooling. So what's good about homeschooling? Let me remind you. Well, what's good, uh, one good thing is developing a strong relationship between the parent and child and between the children and their siblings. So I want to have a good relationship with my kids. I want to have a close relationship with them. Just like I want to have a close relationship with my spouse and you know, with family members whenever possible. And homeschooling gives you a better chance to do that. As long as you're not alienating your kids and stressing them out at every turn. And if you are hyper-focused on an outcome, there's a good chance you're gonna stress them out at every turn. So let's take math. Imagine that you, you do math 180 days out of the year, that's the typical school year. And your child does math, and they work on corrections from previous mistakes that they made, because in homeschool, in, my home, in our homeschool, there are no mistakes. We, they make mistakes, but unlike in a brick and mortar school, when my children make mistakes, they go back and they correct them. They, I ensure that they know the right way to do it. If it's a math problem, for example. They don't just make mistakes and move on. They don't just make a C on a test and just move on. That's crazy to me. So imagine if your kids were spending 180 days doing math and they were being challenged and they were learning and they were growing. And at the end of that 180 days, they didn't meet the government standard for what a kid should be doing at that age. Or possibly they didn't meet your standard for what you set, uh, for your ideas of what they should be doing at that age. I would, I would say you need to reevaluate. It's one thing if you spent 50 days out of the year doing math and your kid's behind. That, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your kid works 180 days and does math and each time they sit down and they do math, they're being challenged and they're growing. 
In my opinion, you can't ask any more of your child than that. And if you do, you are unreasonable and you are going to be putting a division between you and your child. And that, that is going against one of the best things about homeschooling, which is creating a great relationship with you and your child. So you don't want to unnecessarily cause strife. Now, if your kid is just being a pain in the butt and not wanting to do their work, of course, <laughs> there might be a little strife. You know, you maybe would send them to their room if they just refuse to do their work. I don't know. I'm not saying avoid strife in a pathological way, but why cause strife unnecessarily? What's the big deal if your kid is a little below standards? Whose standards? Probably the government's standards, probably. Um, possibly a standard that you set. It's hard for me to imagine a kid that works 180 days a year, we'll even say 100 days. Hey, let's take a little more than half of 180. Let's go to 100. Say a kid just works 100 days a year and does math, but when they do it, they're being challenged and they're learning. And they do that for 13 years, including kindergarten. You, you're gonna tell me that kid is, 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 gonna, be, is gonna be dumb? They're, they're, not, they're not gonna know how to do enough math to prevent them from being taken advantage of with, we'll say, loans and having something rung up at the store incorrectly. Really? They're gonna spend 13 years doing math. So I think we get ideas in our head. We get ideas in our head about what they should do and what they shouldn't. And, and we get too rigid. It's good to have an idea in your head. It's good to have a goal. And it's good to have a direction, but be flexible. Have your goal, have your direction, let that inform what you're gonna to do today. Because a lot of time as homeschool parents, we're tired. And you know, if we had to make it up out of thin air every day, we may not do much every day. So that's why I, for me, it's been important to develop a plan and have goals. Because on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm tired. And I can't just think out of these, think up what to do out of, you know, just make it up out of thin air. I just can't do that. Maybe you can, I can't. So, it is important, but you don't want to be too rigid. Whenever you start getting stressed out about something, maybe just let it go for today and, and then just think about it that evening, the next morning. I say, what are my priorities here? Is it actually mission critical? I mean, personally, I think kids need to work on math regularly. They need to study history regularly. Um, they need to learn how to write. They need to be good readers. And all that takes regular, diligent practice and work. Um, but I, I think what it takes is a goal, a direction, and regular work. But not getting stressed out or hyper-focused on a very specific outcome. Just do the work. Just sit down, smile with your kid, laugh with their kid, and you believe it or not, you can actually enjoy the time you spend with your kid when you're doing math or whatever, or grammar. If you're not stressed out about, are they getting it? Oh, they're falling behind. Don't, don't think like that. It's not gonna serve you. It's not gonna serve your kid. And I would argue that a kid that is being pushed and being stressed out because they are below um, whatever standard that some arbitrary person set for them, I think that kid's gonna develop a complex and they're gonna do worse. They're gonna, at the end of their education, they're gonna be worse at math than a kid who was maybe homeschooled and had a parent who was a little more laid back. Yes, they worked, they did 180 days of work, but there wasn't so much pressure. People weren't so concerned about it all. And you see this sort of mentality in schools when you will have first, second, and third graders going to school all day and then coming home with homework. What is the point? When are they supposed, that's why I don't see kids. I live in a pretty crowded neighborhood I don't see many kids out, they're not out. Part of it is people are terrified to let their kids outside, even though it's safer than it was like 40, 50 years ago. Much safer actually. That's part of it. And the other part is these kids all have a lot of homework. And so they just can't, they can't be a kid. Sometimes I, take, I think people t uh, take the be a kid thing a little too far, but come on guys, the, the kids are in school all day long and then they come home and they have more work to do. What are they doing in school, really? I mean, I think parents need to ask, when your kid comes home with way too much schoolwork, if it's too much, I think he should just say no. Or I think you should have a meeting with that teacher and say, you need to get this stuff done in school. You have my kid for six, seven hours. 
you need to get a lot more done. I, I don't want my kid, I want my kid to come home and play. Come home and interact with other children in an unstructured way to play, um, to maybe draw, to maybe just read a book for fun, to not be a constant machine of doing worksheets. And the reason that they're doing that is because the, the schools are really driven. They have these tests. These are assessments. Why? They're based on benchmarks and the kids have to be here and here and here at this age. And there's a constant drive to have them perform on these tests and have them do well on these tests. And what I would ask is, is it really um, having a result that we want? Are kids becoming better readers? Are they becoming more logical, more intelligent? I don't think that they are. I, th I don't think that it is serving the purpose that it, it is intended to serve. Let's imagine that you are doing a typical school schedule. You're copying the local public school. You're taking two to three months off for summer. And then you're trying to cram a very specific amount of learning into the rest of the year. And there's not that much time. There's really not that much time. You really have to go five days a week for the time that you're in school because you're taking a huge chunk of time off and you're taking time off at Christmas. Um, and it's hard. Now, what if a friend wants to go to the museum with you? Are you going to be able to go? I bet you're not. Because I bet you are so focused on the outcome that you are forgetting about the journey. Right? This isn't, this isn't, this isn't a place we want to go. If our friends ask us to go to the museum, we should go to the museum because you're going to learn important things there. And besides, you can put an audiobook on in the car and on the way back. Your kids could do worksheets on the way there and the way back if you're really worried about it. But my point is, don't pass up opportunities because you're so focused on the outcome. I have to finish all of this by the end of the year. Not only finish it, but my child has to be able to memorize and regurgitate everything. You wanna be really careful with that because when you start to go along that line of thinking, you're just copying a public school paradigm. Uh, and it's not healthy. You don't want your kids, you're also gonna probably fall into this memorize and regurgitate information. This idea that there is information that is correct and true, and you're just gonna tell me the right answer. And that goes back to thinking about what an education is, because for me, an education isn't just being a um, encyclopedia. That's not an education. An education is, yes, learning facts, learning things, but more than that, teaching someone to think. If you want a personal example, in our home, we are going on a trip to Italy this year, and no matter what my goals are for my kids, no matter what the state's goals are, we are gonna spend several months learning about Italy, the history of Italy, um, ancient Rome, probably ancient Greece since they're related. We're gonna learn about Pompeii in more detail, um, Herculeum, we're gonna learn a lot. Uh, as much as we can, to, such that when we go there and we visit these places, the things that my kids learn Will really stick in their heads because we'll go there and say hey do you remember when we learned about this and hey do you remember when we learned about that so i would never pass up those opportunities because i was so worried about oh we have this benchmark oh we have this state testing oh you know the government says that my kids should have learned this this year but i took four months to learn about italy no because for my child italy is relevant just like a kid who lives in Italy, they're gonna learn about Italy because it's relevant. Well, because my kid is visiting Italy, all of a sudden Italy becomes relevant and my kids should learn about it. And that's a beautiful thing about homeschool. I don't have to ask anyone. I could just say, hey, we're gonna learn about Italy now. That's what we're gonna do. So that's it really. Make sure you have a goal. Make sure that goal gives you direction. But just don't be a slave to your goal. Leave some room in your thoughts for flexibility so that you can just go with the flow sometimes, okay? If you have any ideas, opinions, or thoughts, please tell me in the comments below. If you have any suggestions for videos that you'd like me to make, put those in the comments below too. Uh, if you like this video, please click thumbs up. And if you wanna see more videos like this, please click subscribe and the notification bell next to it. In the meantime, happy homeschooling and have a great day.